Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Modest Siblings. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. On this episode, we read Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. This is mostly completely fine for most people. There's a, a weird little bit of fat shaming, and it's it's weird because it comes from a, a character who is really proud of the fact that she's not looking down on women for being sex workers while she's asking <laughs> if he pays by the pound for them. So that's um that's there. It's 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 from the nineties. It's like, you know. Yes, yeah, so hey y'all. Hey y'all! We haven't done the hey y'all in a while. It feels very wooden. But like, hey, let's like, hey y'all, hey y'all. There we go. We're back. Yes. Do it. So we decided that this month, what we're gonna do is pick all of your book boyfriends and just crap all over them. Like your 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 emo book boyfriends. Oh my god, your bad boys, your bad boys of literature. Yes. So what we've decided is to look at the Panic at the Disco heroes, who are emo but also dramatic AF. Yes. And that is why what has led us to Loretta Chase's Lord of Scoundrels. And I have wanted to read this for a while because um, I think it's interesting. That, so this is a 90s book. It's from 95. Um, but like a lot of people on like Reddit and other places where people talk about romance novels, this is their favorite historical. They love it. Yeah. Which I mean, like, uh, cool. Let's see what it's like. Yeah. So um, we did. And I read it in like two days. Yeah, I mean, it, like is, it is a quick read. It yeah. reads fast. This man is the most dramatic man. <laughs> yes, like, absolutely. If y'all, he is wearing black eyeliner. He is in. He is under that underpass, getting ready to dance to Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas," dressed like a juggalo. Like he <laughs> is the most emo man on the planet. He owns a two hundred dollars Sandman statue. Oh, for sure, for <laughs> sure. He is going to tell you all about like why he thinks that Neil Gaiman's blah 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 is the best thing that blah 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 blah. He he may even be a really big Poppy Seed Bright fan, which I mean. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's like he is so wrapped this up. This motherfucker, his had he been hanging out in the 1990s when this book was written, would have been wearing some jinkos and <laughs> a mesh shirt, and had his hair shaved on one side and stuck up on the other. So we are talking about again, Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. So I do have a serious soft spot for those guys. <laughs> I do, like, it's gonna be a while because I do not like give me a dumb himbo every day over somebody that oh no these fuckers are exhausting it's so exhausting <laughs> so we got just like with scruples this book has a weird like it's not harmful but there's a lot of like hey fat so so i've got a and it takes place a lot of it takes place in france so we're drinking fat bastard yet again and we have some some champers for later um <laughs> for me congratulating myself getting through this and not like you know, body slamming this guy. <laughs> so, well, and it has this very funny thing. Um, uh, in terms of like body shaming, it's not. It, it's not that it talks about thinness all the time. It's that it talks about tininess all the time. Yeah. Like she is so small with an O. She is Tinkerbell. She is. You could sit on her and she just go up your butthole and you'd lose her. I mean, she's she a is... pocket rocket, y'all. She is a pocket rocket. And he, it is weird because he talks about his body in a lot of body shaming ways. Which, but we'll get, yeah, we're gonna we'll get to that. It. We're, we're already jumping in again. Yep. We are here and let's tell you what it's about. Yeah, so let me, yeah, you go ahead. Do you want to do, yeah, I'll do the cover and all. Uh, so, um, and I'll sadly, tell you guys about all Loretta. Yeah. Sadly, I read this on Libby, um, free from the library. Check it out. Um, and it has a terrible cover on that. One of those completely like boring, whatever. It's just a lady's face. Um, but the OG cover is great. It's like this big clinch cover. It's got like, um, you know, he's shirtless and she's like, ah, and it's, it, it's a great cover. I love it very much. Um, and let me read you the jacket. Copy. There's a lot of hair. There's so much hair. And I do love a book where there's so much hair on the cover. I do enjoy that very much. But really, she should, um, you know, if you take it from the book, she should be like a little mosquito buzzing around his head. Like she should be, <laughs> she shouldn't even be visible. They should sell it with a magnifying glass, like a little novelty product. She's the tiniest person that ever existed. Yes. Yeah. Determined lady. Tough-minded Jessica Trent's sole intention is to free her nitwit brother from the destructive influence of Sebastian Ballister, the notorious Marquis of Dane. She never expects to desire the arrogant, amoral cad. 
and when Dane's reciprocal passion places them in a scandalously compromising and public position, Jessica is left with no choice but to seek satisfaction. <laughs> That's cute because it's in both ways. Uh, Lord of Scoundrels. Damn the minx for tempting him, kissing him, and then forcing him to salvage her reputation. Lord Dane can't wait to put the infuriating blue stocking in her place and in some amorous position. And if that means marriage, so be it. Though Sebastian is less than certain he can continue to remain aloof and steal his heart to the sensuous, headstrong lady's considerable charms. I'm thinking about like that OED that you can buy that has like the little magnifying rock. That you like it's like the lens, but it's like a piece of glass, and it puts. And so he has to get that to see. I'm sorry, she's very tiny. She's the tiniest. Oh my god! So let's talk about Loretta. Oh Loretta, we're gonna go to Loretta's page. Get here. back, Loretta. I only have again. I have like my head can only fit one Loretta, and it's one. So she wants you guys to know that she attended New England public schools. Where she diagrammed sentences and were drilled in spelling and grammar. Yeah, uh, everybody. I yeah. mean, not New England. But she's either. letting you know that this brutal process proved useful later in life. Like, girl, you did not go and, like, attend the Cider House rules. Calm down. <laughs> um, like, okay, so she went to Clark University and getting a BA. Um, da 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 She... She had some fun jobs. So she wants you to know that she worked for jewelry and clothing retailers and a Dickensian six-month experience as a meter maid. And her main business in life was writing. That's why she majored in English. Anyway, she wants to write the great American novel, and she got married, and her husband's like, hey, do it. And so she did. So that's basically what we... I don't want to dog on her. It's just that other people have had, like, really... I Interesting mean, life. Judith Krantz. I know. Like, you're coming off Judith Krantz and like, oh, I went to the New England public schools. You know what? Well, congratulations for getting the best public education in the nation. Yeah. Good <laughs> for you. Hooray. Right. You um, know, I diagrammed a lot of sentences because in my South Carolina public school, in middle school, the principal was getting her doctorate. So she was doing experiments in the school. And she thought that every teacher ought to be able to teach every subject. So I had the best algebra teacher in the state for English. So we diagram sentences all year long because that's the closest you can get to algebra. The wildest thing. Yeah. So Loretta Chase's Lord of Scandals. Let's jump in. So we start off. We're in. We're in old gay Paris, <laughs> and we have Jess and her grandmother. And we don't remember the grandmother's name. It doesn't matter because she's awesome, but she's in it for fifty pages. And Jess is here to round up her brother Bertie. And Bertie is going to dissolution because of his bad friends, most notably Dane, the Marquis of, I guess it's the Marquis of Dane, but his name is really Sebastian, but it's yeah. one of those things. We, we call think, him Dane through most of the This thing. book does have a prologue that talks about the sadness of Dane's life, like, as a child. And it is very sad. His father got married, his first wife died, then he gets married to, like, a 17-year-old Italian broad. And, you know, those Italians, they're crazy. He can't handle her. She's 17 and married to like a 65 year old man. She's upset about it, obviously. And she's also Italian. So mm -hmm. she's got a lot of temperament. And so she's always screaming at her son and her son is, just wants to be loved. But he's got a big old honking Italian nose and he's a monster. That's his affliction. He has all the money in the world and a big old Italian nose. It's the worst thing that could ever happen to anybody is that you're rich and powerful, but you've got a big Italian nose. And a tan. And a tan. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, just, you know what? Go to the devil, which is what he does. Yeah. So, you know, her, his mother runs away with a guy, leaves leaves her son with the, the, the bad dad. She ends up dying. He's crying. Nobody will give him a hug. Like, the cook finally gives him a hug. It's it's, it's genuinely sad. It I mean, is like, sad. we're not trying to, you know. I mean, um, I am being a little flippant. But, like, yeah, it is yeah, very, but, like, it's, it's very well, like, fleshed out. His trauma is legit. Yeah. He's a kid. But he is such a pain in the ass about it. Yeah. So he goes to Eaton where, like, he gets thrown in the, you know, he gets thrown in the outhouse, essentially. And then he comes back. Well, I guess fighting. the swirly is way worse before indoor plumbing, isn't it? Yes. And, he, mm. you know, he comes back fighting and becomes the most popular guy at school. So I'm like. Because he's the meanest. So, I mean, you see how this happens. And, yeah. I mean, it's, it's organic. It's well done. Yeah. But so, like, now this guy, like, is is the head scoundrel. He is the head rake. He basically, his dad wasn't going to pay for him to go to Oxford. He was like, I'll send you. You know what? You want to go to Harvard? And that's where everybody's gone? But, you know, I want us to fuck you, and I'm going to send you to Yale. 
motherfucker. <laughs> and he's like, ah, I'm really good at gambling on horses, so I'm gonna pay for myself to go to, you know, to Oxford. Which is hilarious, like, that this dude would bother to go to college. <laughs> I know. I was like, come on, man. What, so you can get a good job? <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> like, you've sold everything, but, like, he, he's hanging out in Paris, and apparently all he's doing in Paris is, like, buying antiques and sleeping with big women. We don't know what that means. We don't know if, if it's, like... I think they were truly big, because he said he likes them Rubens-esque, and, you know, a Rubens-esque lady isn't just big old tits and skinny. I'm a Rubens-esque lady is a big lady. So I like to think, my headcanon of this, is that he is sleeping with a lot of sex workers who are large. Biggins. Biggins all the way <laughs> around. I'm all talking the way. big ladies, BBWs. And I, I, I will refuse to admit any other answer because <laughs> it would make me sad. So, like, he <laughs> is just living it up with other people who cannot necessarily afford to do what he is doing. And on each arm, he has a plum of a large yeah, lady. He has just got all, like, it's like a... <laughs> He's having the best time. She's just rosy. Yeah. I'm just so, picturing her just being rosy. You know, we have Jess, and then then we have Jess, who is so tiny. The five foot, whatever, 100 pound. Well, she's over. It's like 112 pounds. Yeah, yeah. It says that she's seven stone and some. So, okay. She is one of those utterly ahistorical romance novel heroines. Like, completely unbelievable. Because she has to worry about her reputation, but she also buys, like, dirty novelty watches. For her grandpa. And, for and her is mama. never supervised yeah. at all because her mama is one of those famous, like, um, femme fatales. They keep saying yeah. the femme fatales. And so they have come to. Paris, one for Mama's birthday, because Mama wants to get that D, so good for her, but also to get her brother Birdie, who's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and her uh, Birdie has fallen into Dane's orbit, and this is too rich for Birdie's blood. Yeah. He can't keep up with this. No. And Birdie's dumb. Like, he's just stupid. He's a dumb as a bag of hair, yeah. which is kind of great. I mean, like, he is legitimately stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and so, the first meeting of Dane and Jess happens at an antique store. She wants to start, the and sex, this will never come up again. The she, sexiest place out there. She the wants to start store. an antique store of her own, which makes us the second, like, store-owning boss bitch <laughs> book yes. that we've seen read in a row. Because uh, she has just, like, an eye for antiques. Is she going to name it Scruples, I wonder? Please. Is it going to look like Cracker Barrel? Yes. <laughs> yes. And he won't be allowed in because he's too tan. He's too tan, and he doesn't have a nickname like Tarantula or, like, <laughs> yeah. Also, he probably needs to pluck his eyebrows. Like, that's, that, oh my that's God, when I they say he's ugly, I think that that's what they mean. <laughs> he's just got the big nose that he's got eyebrow situation. Yes. Which, I mean, you know, you can just fix that. It's fine. Yeah. So they meet at the, they meet at the antique store, and Jess is in it she sees this big old honka man and his big old honka nose and she's like Sploosh. I, I want that nose nosing around in my business like i want it like opening up folds like that <laughs> nose can that nose can do can my part taxes. a curtain it can part of my curtain. It can, like, it can write a sonnet. This nose. It's, like, very, like, she was, like, the Cyrano de Berg, Like, she's like, no, just give me the nose. I'm here for it. So she's buying a novelty sex watch for her grandmother for her birthday. Um, and, and it's unusual in the novelty sex watch world. I, how it is usual, though, is y'all remember, like, Hey, hey, kids, <laughs> you remember before the internet and you just had to find ways to like titillate yourself so you write boobs with your calculator? Yes, I do. Or remember. you would get those pens uh -huh. that you could like, it would be a lady and then you'd flip the pen over and like the top would go off and it'd be like, <gasps> boom. So yeah. it's that. It's yeah. that. But it's Only... a watch, but it's got a guy, like, going down on a lady. Yeah, and so, like, usually it's the other way around. So it's kind of, like, it's a rarity for that. Mm. And so and she's like, I'll take that one. He's like, ah, oh, fuck her, fuck her, fuck her. So, but then she sees, like, uh, this, um, this grimy of thing. Ass, like, she sees this grimy thing, this, like, Russian icon that's, like, half rotted. And she takes this dude down, like, this very astute antique dude. Yeah. Down to, like, ten bucks. Um... 
And then, of course, you, you find out later that it was like this. This is priceless. This priceless icon. Whatever. Okay. She's so good at antiquing. But don't but we worry. Don't know how she this knows will any not of it. come up Ever again. Ever again. This will not come up again. So anyway, they meet, and she's like, "Can you please get away from my brother? You are not good for him. He's going to die of alcohol poisoning." Well, she, well, she's like, she's like, my brother is too stupid to hang out with you. <laughs> she's like, he is dumb, and like you're just that. He's like, he's like nobody understands. I'm. A monster, you know, like he's so like, oh, oh, like you could see, you could see him pushing that hair behind <laughs> the fucking ear, like Jordan. Meanwhile, Carolina. every time she sees him, she's like, "The devil has appeared." Beelzebub is here. Like, no, that's just an emo dude, girl. Like, girl, we can get you one of those. We'll yeah. go to the hot topic. Like, oh my god, he would have like, oh, uh, he would have all the, the Emily sh- the Strange. He would have all the shirts with the like the thumb holes in it, so he could just be like, I don't, you know what? You used to have to make those your own goddamn self. They didn't used to come with thumb holes. The practicality of those things, like hey, washing your hands with the thumb hole, is just. He drew on his converses so oh, much. Oh, God. Y'all. Nobody understands him. He's too deep. And you know what? Because he was ugly for five minutes. And, I mean, I appreciate that she's, like, trying to make it like, hey, he was ugly growing up, so he had to develop a personality. Well, the thing is, you can't tell, though. His because personality sucks, though. He's This sucks. is exactly... The, okay, now, I will admit that I had a giant literary crush on Mr. Rochester from Jane Eyre as a child, okay? As a I way too it. young child. And you can never tell in that book, is Rochester actually ugly? Or is that supposed to be sort of like that he's got, a, you know, a spiritual flaw in that, you know... I, you know what? Dead wife, Here's yeah, what it comes dead. down to is... Is that we really just have to appreciate women because women will write a man and talk about him being ugly but still being appealing. Mm-hmm. A man ain't ever writing about a woman oh, being hell a, no. You know what? She's ugly but hot. She has a good heart. She has nice skin. I guess. No. <laughs> yeah. No. That's the best you can get from a man. No. Like I, I want to put it a plug in by the way. If you were also kind of now looking back and realizing that Jane Eyre still slaps, but Mister Rochester is like super problematic. Gwendolyn Kiss Reluctant Immortals is about Lucy from Dracula and Jane. Like um, they're kind of on the run from their respective men, and it catches up for them. Team in, Attic Wife, all the way. Right. Uh, in uh, in sixties uh, San Francisco, and it's I thought it was really really good. Anyway, so like these two have this whole very down with love vibe, or like sex and the single girl vibe, which is like, funny because she uh, is not married. <laughs> She's not like a widow or something. She is not married. No, but it's it's very like I'm gonna one up you. No, but I know what you're gonna do, so I'm gonna do this. So, but things happen later in this book where she has to worry about being ruined. She's already fucking. I mean, you I know, don't, I don't. <laughs> So, okay, so they have, after after the, the birdie run in, she is at a, they decide to have a meetup because he's he's a little pissed off that she got this icon. They find out that the this half-rotted thing that she found was like this priceless Russian icon, and he's mad that she got it over him. And it's also got an emotional theme for him. This is this very mother and child yeah. thing. Anyway, move on. It, so she's like, well, you know what you can do? We're going to meet me at this tea shop, and we're going to square off and talk. And they have some flirty banter. And he's essentially threatening to ruin her. Yeah. It's like, he's like, like I'll do it right now. And she's like, well, then do it. And he's like. And I mean, this is big stakes for her. This is the yeah. rest of her life. But, you know. She doesn't give a shit. It is the hottest fucking scene. No, he guys. Like, hates her. He, you know, she's got those super crazy long gloves on that have like 27 buttons. This book actually understands how stupid looking 1830s fashion is. I'll yeah. give him that. Like, it is the ridiculously most be ribbon, yes. most be god thing in the world. I like that this book uses the word gigod. Yeah. But he's unbuttoning her glove at the at the tea shop. It is hot. It is very hot. And she's like, I'm going to bang him right now. And then Birdie shows up, you know. He's like, I found the thing you sent me to go find. <laughs> like, they sent him off for, like, a pack of wiper fluid or a left-handed yeah, whatever. Right. I mean, like, this man is really fucking dumb. Poor Birdie. So, they are, but everybody in town is talking about these two. And, you know, because he's, he's the devil and she's the size of a mouse. And they're like, oh, look at these two. What if he accidentally sat on her? <laughs> You know, it's over. <laughs> so people are making bets. And one of the people making bets is another one of Dane's friends, Vautry. And <clears throat> we find out that Vautry is broke. This comes Like out. a lot of these guys are like hanging with Dane above their means, which yeah. is a bad idea. So 
they keep having these little flirty moments. And they end up like super hot making out by oh, oh, so she shows up. She's trying to find her brother. They're supposed to go to some dumb party. So she comes to Dane's house and essentially an orgy is happening. Yeah, there. with the big girls. The biggins. The biggins are like Dane's about to get like a BJ in front of all his friends. It's great. She stomps in and she's like, Where's my brother? And her brother's passed, like passed out on the floor. And, and she's she like, Oh, it. thank God. I thought he might be dead. All right, carry on. And then she walks back out. And then Dane's like, How dare you? And he comes out chasing her. And she's like, Well, I'm glad you're walking me home. He's like, That's not what I'm doing at all. You don't understand what I'm doing. You don't understand my pain. And then they make out and it's very hot. Yeah, and they make out hard. <laughs> you know, but he's also like, She's so big. He has to do that thing where he picks her up and i'm always like this can't be a good like this can't be good kissing where you're just being uh, picked because it hurts under yeah, your arm like, under your you arm because it's like being like you're basically she's on crutches yeah you know <laughs> and she's being picked out well what would he have, I mean, he would have to get on one of those like uh, rigs where you're pretending like, you're the magician's girl and you're pretending to be cut in half so like <laughs> your head's up and she gotta be laying down in a box yes, okay. i mean that would be how he would have to do this so they make out then lightning strikes the like light pole near them and they're it's like, symbolic yeah of his they're dick like, they're like yeah and so she goes running off yeah, i had to like, go home <laughs> he's like motherfucker so he goes back up he goes back home so and, obviously everybody oh and she keeps about. making fun of like the big ones he's she's like i saw those big old girls you were with and he's like she calls them cows and he's like yeah excuse you Hi. because she's like I, I i i don't i don't disrespect for them for their profession and then she's like, my but, God, they're udders. <laughs> but I will disrespect them for being big. Like, they got them big old boobs, and they're, like, over five foot, and I'm, like, 4'11". <laughs> and, you know, like, <laughs> you guys can keep me in a... a oh! Asshole. She doesn't like fat shaming either. Oh. I know. I know. And they were just nice ladies. Oh! Yeah. See, just like when she's when she's not chasing down men, she's just asleep in a drawer. Like yeah. she's that small. In a matchbox. Yes. <laughs> so, like Stuart Little. <laughs> so Stuart Little like tells off, you know, this big old big old man and then she runs away. All right. So the Ton is obviously extremely interested in this because I mean, why wouldn't they be? This is the most entertainment anybody's ever had in a year. A mosquito might fuck a bear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna place bets on it. Yeah, so uh, like uh, uh, one of the society ladies in Paris has a party and invites the two of them because she figures if they show, awesome. If yes. they don't show, well, then everybody will be like, come to see if they show. Yeah, it's entertainment. Yeah, and so Jess Jess has like this great relationship with her grandma. And her, her grandma's like, go have a good time. Do what do what the fuck you want. I don't care. I'm seventy and I'm still Yeah, in other words, her grandmother's not taking care of her because no. she, if she really gets <laughs> ruined, you know you're you get stuck as a governess getting assaulted by Edward Rochester. Yeah, well, well his attic wife is just like, Uh-huh. Oh, yes. <laughs> Trying to burn your fucking nightgown. I mean, like, you know, this is not gonna be all right for you. This is so, not a long term strategy. This this over dramatic motherfucker. Like she's at the party having a good time. Does not show up until the stroke of the, the last stroke. stroke of midnight. He's, He's like, already given away her um dance. Her dances, but it's, it's okay because he breaks every single. He's like, I'm here. He like kicks open the door and he's like, I he, I come <laughs> showing up at midnight. Like, oh surprise! All right, hot topic. Good for you, <laughs> you moody motherfucker. <laughs> like, and they dance, but they waltz hot. Not like not like British waltzers. This man is a he waltzes hard. He he is not. He's throwing her around. The third beat is his dick. He yes. waltzes left foot, right foot, dick. Left yes. foot, right foot, his, dick. It's so big because you know he's so emo. It's so Italian. I mean, he's so Italian. <laughs> it's as big as his nose. Um, so like uh, and and then like yeah like some well there's some stupid party business and they end up back out in the back garden making out. Well, where they go is the guy whose house it is just has some purloined artifacts from, you know, conquered places. And he's like, obviously. So he just throws you? her on top of a sarcophagi. And he's like, this is where we're going to make out. And like, and, but she's down for oh, I mean, it. Obviously, though. you know, she is riding that marble. Hand to God, if I had the chance to like do it on a sarcophagi, I would do it. 
I'm not going to do it on a regular, like, grave. I'm not that common. Oh, no, no, no. But I'm not that common. I'm not that cheap. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you calling Mary Shelley cheap? <laughs> but if I could do it on a sarcophagi, I would do it. The eater of the dead. <laughs> the eater of the... <laughs> you know what I'm talking about now. Also, there was, like, some kind of ruckus happening. It doesn't matter. Yeah, somebody shot somebody. It doesn't even matter. It's yeah, scary. But they're good. I mean, he has loosened her stays. Her, her tits are out. And I mean, granted, you know, her tits are maybe like three inches from her like You need the binoculars. Yes. And I don't mean like the regular people with binoculars. I mean the kind that your birder friend has. Yeah, she's so tiny. But <laughs> like, and all of a sudden all these people show up and he's like, ha ha ha, bye. Yeah. And it's awful. That part well, is And awful. so you find out later, because like it, it's very confused in, in the book because they're, she's very upset because now she's actually really she's ruined. really like ruined. Yeah. But then like both of them think that the other one set them up. Yeah. Which is shitty. I mean, like, you know, neither one of them set the other one up, but you understand why they would think so, because he had somebody do that before, and her name was Charity. Um, he yeah, had somebody... The Charity is the... He had somebody else do it. It was the... It's br- happened to him twice before then, because Charity did it, and then somebody the else did it. The sister of his dead friend slash tormentor at Eaton that, like... Yeah, like, people keep trying to set him up in a compromising position to make him marry them. Like, it happens all the fucking time. So, I mean, okay, fair. I get that. Yeah. And now she's like, uh, well, shit. So, what she does is... reasonable. It's amazing. We've read... This is our 70-something book. It might even be our 80th book. We have never had a bitch just walk in and shoot the hero ever before. She walks into his apartment or his house. And, like, again, he's got the biggins on him. Mm. And she's like, go away. And they're, like, the biggins guy. Excuse me, (laughs) ma'am. And, like, all his friends are just hanging out. And she just pulls a gun out and shoots him. Now, she's a a crack shot, so she knows where she's going to shoot him. Yeah, but, like, when you see the scene, that's not clear. Yeah. She is, because, of course, like, she has to think about, like, well... If he's not going to salvage my reputation, I mean, obviously what a, a stand-up dude would have done is just marry her on the spot. Yeah. But he's not going to do that. So what's she got to do? Well, she's got to be the wronged woman. I'm going to ruin his reputation. Yeah. And he's going to be the guy that gets shot by a four foot eleven, you know, bird. The bun, like, she has to, like, <laughs> lever up. It's like if if, uh, if Jerry and Tom and Jerry, like, shoots a gun, like, he has to, like, <laughs> lever it up and, like, you know. And then she flies backwards yes. because she's so small Exactly. She can't hold on to the gun. Yes. So she shoots him and we find out that she shot him in the arm and he passed out and his arm gets fixed and he has a fever yeah he only, he does it's touch and he go for sick. a minute he gets sick but also that like, he's just got like psychosomatic arm he has hysterical blindness of the arm yeah. i'm not kidding i'm not making <laughs> he seriously there's no reason for his arm not to work he hires like 80 doctors they all tell him like i don't know yeah and it's obviously ah. it's hysterical blindness of the heart yeah hysterical like what are yeah like atrophy like yeah he can't use his arm so he's just got now now in addition to being maybe not ugly but like big nosed and tall <laughs> he's and like he's hand. just got like a hang he's got like a dead arm he won't hanging. use a sling because it ruins the line of his coat which i mean I fair but also fair. like this is the most emo thing like you know what i got my coat on i got my oh i'm not gonna do anything that ruins you my would life. not wear a sling if you thought it clashed with your dress with your sequin pink thing I would get a sequin pink sling. Well, obviously you would. I don't know why he doesn't do that. I know, because you know what? He could have gotten a sling and he could have dyed it black and like had like all the... Emily the Strange on it? Yes, he could have... (laughs) Emily the Strange. He could have got it signed by all of his favorite bands. He could have gotten a Glenn Danzig themed one because this is the most mother... (laughs) Like he is so extra. This is the most extra man I've like. You ever see the thing where Glenn Danzig spits a tooth out in a show? I've seen him get punched by that guy. Well, no, it was just like literally he just like playing a song and then he's like, that's weird. That is also awesome tooth. It's not even like emo about it. He's just like, huh. It's the strangest video you'll ever so see. So finally he gets his like, he gets well enough and he's like, here it comes. Well, the greatest thing is that she lawyers up with the only feminist she lawyer. Was, she, well, she's <laughs> like, I'm going to get myself arrested and we're going to have a whole public trial and everybody's, you're going to now not be known as the darkest man that ever lived. You're going to be known as the man that got shot by a four foot 11 little tiny woman and it's going to ruin your, your angsty street cred. And the lawyer's like, hey, look, okay, I know that all the laws are technically against 
against women in this, but I'm gonna pull in every public opinion shit. Yeah, this will you will. And we're in hate Paris, bitch. Yeah, we're, we're in not- Paris. The Paris jury will never convict a pretty mosquito yes. lady. We're never gonna. You're t- Tinkerbell ain't going to the Bastille, bitch. And so he's finally like, well, fine, I'm gonna marry you then. I'm gonna marry. And you. then the lawyer's like, um, I'll just leave. The- no, but she's like, you know what? Yeah, you're gonna marry, but but this guy's gonna. He is going to negotiate my contract. Uh-huh. And I'm going to get all the money. Yeah, I, we have a prenup, and that prenup is ironclad. It's fantastic. I enjoyed that yes, aspect of much. it. I really did. I enjoyed that. And he's like, okay, so we're marrying at the most marrying place. We're not doing this fucking half ass. We're gonna. We're going to London. And, and this is the thing. Is like all of his threats where he's like, I'm gonna come at you so hard. It's like I'm gonna lick your pussy so good. <laughs> I'm gonna take you to St James's Cathedral and I'm gonna marry you there. And we're gonna do it right. She's like, you're gonna have the prettiest dress. It's like I don't want all that. She's like, I don't care. You're gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hard. <laughs> woo, woo. Let's go watch the crow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know he acts like he loves the crow, but really he watches Labyrinth all the time. <laughs> Both are amazing. Yes. I love the crow. Yeah, did I? I mean, like, no, so don't take any of this as like an indication that I do not love the crow and labyrinth. I mean, yeah, no, but and I mean, Sandman. <laughs> but he is. He's so he's so hard. The thing that I love about this this clown is that he is. <laughs> He wants to be hard, but he's also dramatic as fuck. So, again, he is Panic as a Disco, whose latest album is called Viva Las Vengeance. <laughs> and I feel like that is Hundo P, Sebastian, Lord Dane, whatever. Like He's I'm, read Lost Souls like <laughs> 10 times. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to be angsty, but I'm going to be extra about it. You know, <laughs> I'm going to wear a top hat and I'm going to sing real loud and wear eyeliner. He's very theatrical. So, so okay, we, we I forgot to tell you because this, this makes I mean this is not tightly plotted. No, this, this is a bit of I, this should have had another editorial pass. But so in one of his forays into the big lady uh, big adventure, the, the big top with the biggins in it, um, like he has this thing uh, where where is it Beaumont or Beaufort or Bo something? Bo, okay, so Bo Bridges. You obviously this is a part. This is like the first book in a series. So other people are in this book for just a minute. That you're gonna be like you're gonna show up later. And there's one guy who named Ed, Edmund who Esmond who is like the hottest man in Europe. The ladies want him and the men want him. And he is super into this guy Beaumont's wife. And Beaumont. It is not stated explicitly, but I think he's either an evil gay or an evil bisexual. Yeah, because um, there, there's a thing where um, like something seems a little off to Dane. He's in oh. he's in the room with one of the biggins, and he sees like an eye in like a picture. He's like, "There's a peephole," oh, and he like he goes, didn't say it's in a portrait, but I like to think it's in that kind of Scooby Doo one with yeah. the eyes cut out. <laughs> and so he like. Bust it open and there's both. You want to see my dick. <laughs> Honey, you could have seen my... I mean, we do naked wrestling all the time on Tuesday. Yeah, he's like, bye, bye, bye. like, I gotta go, bye. <laughs> like, you know... Bait. No, he beats the shit out of him, actually. Yeah. So, it's so... So, you got that going on in the background, although it's it's not kind of, you know... Just, just keep that in the back of your head. And, yeah, and we have this, like, this... It's all about this... Russian icon, and it's it's known also. Uh, everybody knows in this, and pro- including probably Jess, uh, that um, he does have a, a bastard son with this lady Charity. She doesn't know yet. Yeah, but I, I mean, everybody knows, so yeah. she probably knows. Her grandma probably told her. So this man, the, again, the angstiest man in the world, like we said, you know, he has he has put on his uh, all of his albums. He is listening to, as my husband did when he was angsty and emo in high school, he's just listening to, like, Simon Garfunkel's, uh, you know, I'm a rock, I'm an island. Oh, my God. Like, that's what he's listening to. But when he gets married, he's, like, just cracking jokes. Like, he's like, ha, 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 you know, like. And they have the weirdest trip to, okay, so he's going to take her to his family home, which is very fraught for him, because that's where all this shit happened yeah, when he was a kid. Like, yeah, it's not a happy place. And so he keeps fucking it up. Like, he runs into somebody he knows at one of the inns, like the post inns, and they get in a boxing match. And he gets really drunk, and so they can't do it. Like, they get in a boxing match because the guy keeps going. He's like, again, you got to go big, big nose Dane. With this this tiny beautiful woman, and that guy's like, "Hey, 
like, you're not married. And he's like, don't you talk about my wife. And he's like, but you're not married. He's like, don't you talk about my wife. She's like, she's hot. And he's like, we're fighting. So they get drunk and they fight. And she's, and she's like, oh, that's a good right hook. I mean, he, she is analyzing this boxing match. Like, you know. Yes, she is watching it. She is horny for it. And then he shows up and he's way too drunk and he passes out. Kind of on purpose. Like, he's, he's, he's self-sabotaging about this. Yes, he's like scared he's going to break her because, you know, she's so tiny. Yeah, you know, yeah. He is literally afraid to put his penis in her vagina like, because her vagina. I kill her. That's yeah. Bad. Like, well, how big is your penis? Like, do you understand? Well, no, he says later it's of average size. At least it's it's not one of those ones where he's got this giant dick. I'm thinking about the Sherbrooke Bride that we read, where it was literally that he had this giant dick that did not fit inside this woman. And it was awful and horrible in all these different ways. No, it's just an average dick. And she's an average lady. And eventually he does realize, like, oh, that's right. Women have babies. (laughs) Yeah, it's like she's so nonplussed about it. So then they amazingly go to Stonehenge. They go to Stonehenge where they make out. I can tell you, the, when I went to Stonehenge, I did not make out with anybody. No. I, I had to take... A, I was like 15, though. I had to take a train from London, leave me and my friends, and we had, like, essentially the way it worked out is we had 30 minutes at Stonehenge. So we got to Stonehenge, and we ran a circle around it. We're like, Stonehenge, did you... Stonehenge, did you take a pictures? And then we went to the Stonehenge gift shop for a hot minute, and then we had to get back on the bus, and we just hung out in Salisbury for a minute. So, anyway. Good cathedral there. So, anyway, uh, they <laughs> finally get to his ancestral home. And remember, she does not know any of this shit about his mom being a stain on the nation's honor and all this shit. So, like, uh, like he, she's like, okay. And then he's like, here, like, uh, the servants will take you to your apartments. They eat dinner at that Batman, like the, uh, the, yes, the Michael the Batman, Keaton Batman. Yes, the Batman desk. Or the Batman, the Batman table. Yeah. And they're like... And then they, they usher her to these cold-ass giant suite of rooms. It's like a fucking mausoleum. And she's like, well, okay, I guess I I, I am the P and the princess and the P. I'll just go to bed, I guess. And then she goes to track him down and like... The next day, like, she tries to put oh, their no, marriage this, this in the... This is really cute. Like, so he, like, the first time, like... The first night or whatever, they don't get it in so to speak but he goes down on her and like once she like gets hers she like straight up passes out that's and great he's like just like a man like oh i'm trying to do it you know but he's all like in his head about so like um she's like you're gonna put me in this family motherfucking bible yeah and he's like uh d- okay and then she finds out actually his father wrote down uh personally yeah. like her his mother's death even though like which is interesting and he didn't know that because he hadn't looked in this thing and she's all like what is going on but yeah so like that happens and like it's clear to him then that she does not know all this stuff about his mom but yeah yeah, yeah they, they they get into extremely heavy petting on the um on the divan in the, yes, in the it's yeah fun. the servants i feel so sorry for the servants in this because they're always trying to do their jobs and always being chased away by these complete oh, assholes here's what's happening with these poor fucking servants like they're just like do 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 sweeping up get out making some making some pottage whatever doing some things and it's either like either these people are doing it or this giant man is just screaming at them go you know like like, like, oh my god just you know even shields like telling the ghost and i'm like oh my god my dude would have benefited so much for some fucking like well beatred like Mm -hmm. jesus christ all right and so like yeah uh, he's like all up in there and he's like oh my god i can't put my penis in that she'll just break into half it'll it'll, it'll like the lava will come out he's like the only thing i can do is be a complete bastard to her and also uh get in there with my tongue yeah so they finally do have sex and it's- no 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 before that happens he is like he goes and meets one of his other friends and then he's gonna have like a oh. four-day like boys, boys trip. trip he's gonna boys trip it like to go watch a wrestling match yeah and so she finds out about it and she puts on her sexiest like honeymoon negligee which she yeah. already told him about yeah and she walks in she tells all the servants to get the fuck out and she starts unpacking his stuff and they like wrestle they do they wrestle it's um, okay i would like to say i would like to it's point hot. this out it's the biggest bed in the world it's the biggest bed anybody has ever seen <laughs> it is 25 feet Square. That means it's only five feet on each side. Does this woman not know how to do math? Like I understand that back in the day, people like slept kind of sitting up, so it's why they got small. Well, you got to remember, she's three. She's like two feet, so that bed yeah. is like she could 
set up house and live in that bed because she's so small. Yeah, she got a pup tent made out of the comforter. I know. He is just, you know, like for him, he just has to sleep on a diagonal and hope for the best. Yeah. Because, you know, he's a giant. Five feet in either direction is not a huge bed. I've been to historic houses. They have small beds, but it's not that fucking small. Yeah. Anyway, so they're rolling around on it, and he finally does stick it in, and they have a good time. They have a good time, and she starts crying, but she's a crying because she's overall, and he's like, well, I made it terrible. And then she's like, that was the best thing ever. You know? She's so, yeah, she's very mad at the fact. But she's it's like, actually kind of great because he's expecting all this blood. And it's just like a little like bit of blood. blood. So, yeah. yeah. Like, again, it shows that he's a fucking idiot. That he's yeah. like, I'm going to, like, your dick is act, not actually a sword, my dude. Like, mm-hmm. you're not going to, like, murder her with it. And she, thankfully, um, on, like, some of these heroines, uh, you know, she's been told what's what by her grandma. Oh, yeah. Grandma, again, we don't see grandma, but grandma is very, very, very sexually progressive. Anyway, so he's like, well, I'm going to take you to the wrestling match. And she's like, Hooray! I love wrestling because I grew up with like 10 boys and I'm very, you know, I'm tiny, but I'm fierce. Mm-hmm. I'm more, I'm more the, the alpha male than any of you guys because that's the yeah. kind of girl she is. So they go to the wrestling match and Valtry is back around and he's like, you find out he's been catting around with this, this, this sex worker named Charity that was one of the, cha- like, she was one of the first people that Dane had a thing with. She, she had a kid. To try to trap him. So they have this whole extortion scheme. Yeah, there's an extortion scheme. Because Valtry wants the that stupid icon. This icon is still in it. Well, and because Valtry is now... Because he's in Dane's orbit. And yes. he has lost 20,000 pounds. Like, hanging out with Dane. Not even... Like, he's only lost... Like, he's only in debt 5,000 pounds. Well, he gets in, 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 in. Yeah, like, everything he like, does to try to get yeah. out. Like, his thing is, like, he's only, like... Because this becomes a plot point later. Is It's 5K. But he's also, Beaumont is in his ear and keeps telling him that everything is worse than it is. And Beaumont keeps telling him that this little icon thing, that's fine. It's like, you know, worth a little bit of money, but not worth a ton. It actually is worth a ton, evidently. No. It's worth a lot of money. But, like, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, he's like, oh, this is worth 20,000 pounds. The whole point is that this guy is pretending, you know, yeah, and he's like, Dane's well, friends aren't really Dane's friends. No. Except for the hot one. The hot one is the, his friend. So he's like, well, we're going to steal it. But he's like, Charity, what we need to do is, you you know, bring the kid around. And so. So there's a scene engineered where, like, the kid, like, um, like a Dane actually has to catch this child. And, like, it's oh. obvious that it's gay and Dane's child because it's ugly as homemade sin. So, yeah, the first time I see him, this is after Dane and... Jess have just fucked in the cemetery. Yeah, they left the wrestling match to have a cemetery fuck. Yeah, I mean, a stand up one. Not- and how the fuck are they going to do a stand up fuck? Where does she have to stand on? Does she have to stand on the roof? I think basically what has to happen is you have to have her sort of like. Up- There's going to be a harness kind of situation. Yeah, or that she's parasailing. Like, she's on one of those like really tall like graves or something. I don't know. So. <laughs> They bang it out, and then all of a sudden she sees this ugly kid running around. Oh, like that kid's ugly to be yours. They keep talking about, like, it's not me just saying the kid's ugly. They keep talking no, about No, 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 no. I mean, like, but, you know, there are ugly children in the Oh, world. obviously. Oh, my God. Some, uh, yeah. That's not always the cutest baby I ever saw. I'm just no. saying. So she's like, she knows from the minute, you know, and he's like, well, everything's terrible because now she's going to hate me because she knows I have a bastard son, and she doesn't care. No, it's like, like in the Sherbrooke Bride where they all do their bastard accounting in the morning. But she's yeah. like really upset. Like, no, we had to. I mean, this child is obviously starving. Yeah. This kid is wearing rags. We had to we had to get him. We have to uh, we had to feed he him and clothe re- him and take care of him. He keeps referring to the child as an it. And it's, you know, he's obviously projecting like, whoa. Yeah. Anyway, so. The, she's back at the she's back at the they go back to. You know, the, the manor, the manor, the house. And she's like, well, I want the her and Dane, like, finally have the biggest fight. And she is just as the queen of freezing a person out. Like, well, she found this portrait of his mother and she thought she was going to, like, surprise him nicely. And and the thing is, like, he actually understands, like, that she thought it would be a nice surprise. But he sees it and, like, uh it's yeah. like that. And so, so that and then, like, and also she wants to bring this kid in, and she, and he just, he, it's like he has hit dead on going 60 miles an hour into all of his trauma face first. I mean, you, you know, know. what he's dealing with is his empire of the dirt. Yeah. He's 
her. He could have it all. It's <laughs> dust, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. So well, that's okay because he's gonna bring her closer to God. <laughs> oh my God! So he's like, "I oh, don't need that. You stay out of it. You, you know." And she's like, "Well, fine." And like she does a deep freeze on him, and it's amazing because it's like a month long. And she figures out where this child. So this child now starts to terrorize the countryside. Yeah, and she's like she's made friends with like this uh, kid is my kid's age. Like he's like seven or eight. And I mean, like, I don't think my kid has the fucking get up and go to like squat in anybody's summer house. But like, you know, right, I'd be like, so proud of him if like, he did. Like he's wa- wagging his dick. He can't get his own like, goddamn snack. No, he's like, <laughs> what is it with the snack? They can't make their own. Like they can't make shit. Like my daughter doesn't know how to work this fucking toaster. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so. She ends up one day saying, she's like, well, I'm going to church. And then, you know, she corners the kid. And, you know, it's a really cute, like, fight scene because it's mm-hmm. so what an adult woman would do to a, like, that does not sound right. But what a girl <laughs> would do to a, a boy, like, because he's fighting her and she just basically Young just, man. Like, starts kissing his face. And he's like, ah! <laughs> you know. It, no, it's legit cute. And, I mean, it, she has a lot of experience with little boys. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like, she was... Sort of like in that governess role, yeah, because she had yeah. all these like cousins, these ten. So cousins. she had to like yeah, unpaid take care of. So you, so you think she'd be a little more fucking careful not to end up as Jane fucking heir? But hey, can't tell so her shit. The the mom finally shows up and they have like a company. The mom's like, I want that icon, and I'll give you the kid. And Jess is like, fine. But then she goes and does what I always want a romance like whatever to do. She talks to Dane and she's like, look. This, this, this bitch, like, uh, she thinks charity. I won't tell you this. She's like, she wants the icon, which Jess had given to Dane for his birthday. And mm-hmm. he was all emotional. And, you know, how he deals with emotions is like burning shit down. He's like, I can't handle the emotions. So she had given this icon to him, to him for his birthday. She's like, Charity wants the icon. She's like, there's w- two ways that we can go about this. You can go just take the kid because you're the man. Yeah, you could totally do that. Or, she gonna or if you don't take the kid, I'm going to give her the thing that she wants. And he's like, well, I guess thank you for telling me. So he goes and like this actually I think is the best part of the book. So he goes to get the kid and Charity and Vautry have like drugged the little boy with laudanum. And he's having an adverse reaction. And they, like, leave. They just leave. They just bug out because they, they well, they've been made. Yeah, they, they leave him to die, essentially, like. And the, you know. Like, Dane actually thinks it's a pile of rags until it makes a yeah, noise. and Dane comes in and he's just, the little kid's like, Wah! at him. And then he throws up on his shoes. And, like. And he just sees himself. And then he, like, yeah. fatherhood comes upon sudden, him. Like, it just clicks. Everything just clicks. And the little boy's calling him Papa and, like. He has them shake. Like, Daddy's here. It's really sweet. It was really sweet. Like, and so he has them like bathe and. So there's some business, and it doesn't really matter where she kind of pays off. Like she takes her money, yeah, and pays the guy off. She's like disappear. Charity. The she pays the mom off because she's she tells the mom like you're take this fifteen hundred pounds, go to Paris because you're about to be thirty. And and your fat ass will do great there. Yeah, and like, and the mom does it, but it's also I think it does a really good job of like being like Charity obviously does care about the son. The boy's name is Dominic on some intrinsic level because she leaves him with people that she knows will take care of him. And so and and that's what um, Jess tells Dane, and she's like, "Look, okay, yeah, I know you were really hurt that your mom left." What she did, though, she didn't take you with her into this crazy, uncertain future. She left you with people. That maybe they happen. weren't going to be great. All right. She, I mean, she was like 17. She left you with people that she knew would feed you yeah. and put you in clothes and shit. And so look at this kid. This kid is starving. He's all skin and bones and he's wearing rags. Yeah. You know? And so and and, and Dane like gets it then. And, and maybe like, that has a little more forgiveness in his heart for his mom. And she's like, you are going to, that kid is going to stay here. It's, you know, she's, and she like brings up families like, or, you know, yeah. Who just, yeah. yeah I mean like, yeah, he can inherit or not whatever. I mean like, you know, yeah, it's fine. Like, you know, uh, people born the other side of the sheet can live. And like, what was like, and that the little boy, Dominic becomes, 100 percent like this was nice because everybody else is like team jess from the the jump because she's the magic girl you know mm-hmm. she's like you know 
manic pixie manic you know pixie dream girl that little boy is like from, daddy's boy yes like <laughs> it is very very cute like because he lets him ride on the horse with him on the way back mm-hmm. and like oh uh, he doesn't want to wear this awful skeleton this- suits <laughs> i had to look that up oh it <laughs> like, looks terribly uncomfortable part where like the kid is just his running, naked again running around the portrait hall like just naked just like ay, 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 ay. Yeah, like he's like on the drapes and his dad has to come get him and it was very cute um it's very sweet but then he finds out he like he like Valtry tries to st- like Valtry is like so concerned about this five thousand pounds that he he sets the gatehouse on he fire. tries to do the plan that they had come up with yes. even though it wasn't going and right left because she's yeah. like well i got she's he's gonna like, do it all by himself he's like i've got 1500 pounds guaranteed now or I could, you know, the whatever ephemeral, like, I could, what, you know, oh. Yeah, so he, like, the idea is that you set the gatehouse on fire, everybody goes there, and you go in and you steal the icon. Yeah. Well, you know, she's there. The thing is, she might be a tiny little fly of a creature, but she can punch like a fucking mule. So she beats the shit out of this dude. She is bashing his head into the floor. If they had not hauled him off of her, off of him, she would have killed him. I mean, she's like a We have never also seen a book where she tried to beat a person to death death. with her bare hands. We have seen a book where she cut somebody's dick off. Heavy catch of fashion. like bare hand did, like yeah the shit out like and it was it was really impressive it's great yeah and then what dane does is he talks to vaudry and vaudry one is hundo p in love with charity like and go then, marry her and then he's like he keeps telling he's like well the he's like this this icon thing is worth twenty thousand pounds and dane who again inexplicably is an art historian and it's like yeah it's like worth maybe like five what are you talking about he's like no beaumont told me it was worth this much money and, and so then it all comes out that the whole it's, reason they got caught in the garden was Bo- beaumont. Like all the yes. stuff has always been beaumont because and, beaumont wanted to look at dane's dick and say so, like which my understanding is you can look at dane's dick for free any goddamn it, day of the week i mean he's Banging it out with the biggins right in front of you. Yeah, I mean, like, so that's not special. This is what I'm like, I don't, yeah. So, but he he ends up paying Vautry's debts off and gives him a per annum stipend. Go get your, go get your biggin. I understand (laughs) biggins. Go get your biggin. Go get the OG biggin I had. And you guys go live happily ever after. And just the, you, you, everybody releases all claims on this child. Yeah. Okay? And like, and then they end up where like somehow again, this man who doesn't understand that his penis will not kill this woman. Like he really, he really, y'all. Well, no. Okay. He, oh, he comes to Jesus about that. No, but what I'm saying is that this man who is so whatever about it in other ways knows that she is pregnant way before she knows she's pregnant. I don't know. Like, I'm like, sorry, you the, thought you couldn't fit it in. That's what I'm saying. It's like, all of a sudden, he's now a gynecological expert. And like, oh, you know, he is Sebastian Dane, emo, OBGYN. Maybe he also has a big pregnancy fetish. So he spent his whole time in I Paris. Maybe he's like, like oh, also. she's going to finally be a big one. Ah, she's gonna gain that two point five pounds. Yeah, she's gonna get the two point five pounds because you know all she, that's all she can gain because all she's because she only weighs point five to start with. It's gonna she's be- gonna have give birth to a bean. Yes, and the- you gotta plant it and it'll make a bean stalk. You gotta climb it, meet a giant, exactly, and steal a baby. Yes, that's the only way for her. Yeah, that's how I got my kid. Yeah, does he have the big giant nose? No. Yeah, then you got to take him. But he does have the big giant fucking attitude. Yeah, you got to take him back. No, they won't. No, I've tried. Okay, (laughs) the warranty (laughs) bullshit. So yes, this has been our reading of that. But now we're going to go to questions. Oh my goodness, questions. Big dick energy or big dick energy? Big nose energy. I I liked him. I. Did he exhausted me because he's so much emotional library. What I appreciated, I, there are things that I really, I, th- I feel like that he is, what was refreshing <clears throat> is that honestly he might be probably, for all of his pain in the assness, the most emotionally intelligent like hero we've had in a while granted like this is later than most of our yeah but yeah i agree because like what what happens is they do these things 
that hurts each other. And then they both kind of realize what they did. He does a lot. Like, this book is mainly They're from very his point of view, which is kind of interesting because he... Well, there's no room for her to have problems. Well, he... The structure is unusual because it it's is all like yeah, like he's been he's kind of the one being taken. And yeah, like, usually yeah. it's uh, if anybody is sort of a, a thinly drawn character, it's the man that they just like you know whatever yeah, you want to put on him. The placeholder, right? But for this, like, there's not much to address except yeah. that she's great and she's awesome. And I mean, like, she's a great character, but she's not like a fully rounded character yeah, because there's no air in the room because he he's needs nice. all the space because his issues are. I mean, and they're 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 fairly come by. He's like. Mother, don't you let your children walk on by like it very much. Intern Wallace is just crying big tears right now. <laughs> you know, I've met Doyle um, from the Misfits, the guy with the just the one, um, the one spiked hair. Oh, God, I... He's super sweet. He's vegan. <laughs> of course he is. No, like he's vegan, but he's like muscular as fuck. Like I don't know where he's getting. Beans. I guess he eats beans. It's the beans. It's the beans. I do love a bean. Bean club. But I mean, like it's just a big old sweetheart, and like it's super like generous with his time and everything else. Like this Doyle guy was just so uh, like he was he was the woman character in the book. Like he's the all the emotional development. Like and it's great, but like he was not for me. But I get it. I get why people will want this to be their. Boyfriend. No, he's a whole ass project. Like I get why like he this book is enormous and people love like that's their book boyfriend. It was compelling. Like to me, I would prefer to not buy a fixer upper. Oh god. Geez. But I, I get I'm like because like he can be fixed because he does things and he's like fuck. You know, like that that's yeah, that's that yeah. that's the thing. Like that's the thing that he does. And I mean like I, I really appreciated the 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 way that the book approached them working through the problems because it's not like anybody was like aha as your free therapist I the woman will do I mean like they both like oh oh now I get why he was like that when I did this I mean you know it's yeah like I get but again I just find him I'm like yeah I mean like uh, he is so obsessed with his image of not caring about his image my thing is, it's like, I just don't want to be with emo Spider-Man. Like, <laughs> I don't want the sad sack Tobey Maguire. Well, what you haven't thought about is this man has crazy money. Um, that's great. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, if we're talking about making a match. Yeah, that's fine. It's, it's like, yes, he's got crazy money. But like, yeah, anyway. You can be a governess and have a first wife burn your wedding dress and laugh in his ass. Or you I mean, can just put a little bit of work into a fixer-upper. I, I mean, obviously, if I have to choose between, you know, Rochester or Dane, da, 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 all the 50 names that he gets, I'm going to take that guy because he doesn't have an attic wife. Like, I mean, we didn't see. <laughs> I mean, he, he yeah. It's, it's There's a lot of addicts in this house. It's very true. He could, Hunter P, have an attic wife. So he's just so fucking emo. Like, I don't want to go to Hot Topic every weekend. I already had to, like, take my daughter there all the time. I don't want to have to go. Well, so I think she's talked him out of Hot Topic by the end of it. So, I mean, like, if, you, if the Hot Topic thing is 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 transient. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, would you talk shit with or about the heroine? So there was... I I ninety percent love her. She's so great and she's so nonplussed about everything. Like, but she's, she's so ahistorical. Yeah. I mean, like, she's just. It's also just that she's like totally like. There's not even she doesn't ever take a pause to like have a realistic like. Mm -hmm. Like, well, maybe she should feel a little conflicted about this man's bastard. Like, you know, yeah. You know, like, but also like, well, holy shit! This kid, like, this kid that just looks like my husband, just came running out in front of me at the. The carriage parking lot. Yeah. Which I was like, this is wild that we basically have a parking lot of these carriages. After I just like uh, fucked a dude, in the I guess cemetery. in like a, some sort of paragliding situation because I am three and a half inches tall. <laughs> I am Thumbelina. I'm Thumbelina. And now this man. And he had to screw me onto his dick like with threads. <laughs> like, so like she doesn't even take a second. Like she just always like. Her first inclination is to be like we have to get this child, which she's, is amazing. But I mean, she's almost—I don't—I—I—I I, I don't like to deploy the word Mary Sue. She's, 
willy nilly. She is a Mary Sue. Though. I think she is. Like she's so modern in all of her thoughts. And good and, like, and and except for the I mean, she's spunky, but in a fun way. And she's never too. She never does something that's really a bad thing. She only does things that are a bad thing because he has trauma. It wouldn't have been a bad thing otherwise. It's like that. Yeah, I will say what I did like about her is that she's obviously like stupidly beautiful but like for her that's like not even a thing yeah i like that she knows it she's aware of it but it's not her whole situation but she is like again she's aware of it she uses it when she can you know but not in a bad way i liked that part of it because usually you you either have like heroines that are like i'm so so beautiful or like or um so beautiful and i don't even realize it so i, yeah. I did like that and i liked the, you know i liked that she was very sex forward except for the biggins like uh, well and the thing is like it's this weird blind spot of this book you know and i mean i guess 95 you know honestly a, a sex worker positive book in 95 is probably unusual but yeah, like yeah, that. and that she's she's very like she tells her grandma like I want this man like she is the she is the predator so to speak like she's she almost the, a little bit pick me though you know yeah I'm not like other girls like I'm a cool girl yeah like, yeah so I, I mean again I, there was so much I really liked about her that it sounds. Like, what we're doing right now is, like, nitpicky, because this book is really well written, yeah. really well. She, but she is a little thin, though, honestly, because yeah. he takes up all the air in the room with his problems. Oh, God. Like, he's so just... So, uh, okay, this is a 300-something page book, but also Bechdel to Bitch is usually easy with long books. But, however, he takes up so much room in the book that, like, the only rule Bechdel to Bitch, like, she only really interacts with her grandmother. Yeah. I mean, she does not have women friends which is Mm-mm. weird right no she's got the grandmother and i think like i mean but they're always talking about they're i think it passes in so much so they're not talking about him they're talking about but with the grandmother she's always talking about sex yeah but they're talking about sex in a really frank good way yeah and i mean she's talking really about like your future what you need to do i mean it's I, I would consider passing the Bechdel test. Yeah. however only kind of by a smidge because like we're her friends the grandma just like dips out too like she just disappears yeah and like once she okay so obviously when you read a gothic when you read like Janet or you read um uh um Rebecca when the the thing is that when you enter this house with this marriage to a stranger you are alone in this house that like you don't have friends there already and so essentially she is isolated she doesn't have like uh you know she immediately like of course everybody in the house loves her and all that sort of thing but like you don't get the feeling that she immediately makes fr- I, I don't know like no i, I wish there'd been like a, a lady's maid like, or the, the fr- housekeeper like, or, or something. like that she met this the cook or or, or if she had met the charity well she met charity but she you know but if she had met this female Beaumont that was talked about all the yeah, time. Yeah, who was like really artist. an artist. Yeah. yeah. Like, that would have been cool. That would have been good if they had had something. Because I think she's like, because again, I feel like that, her and that, uh, I feel like this is part of a series. And I feel like this is missing in this book, though, that she doesn't have, she should have had a female yes, uh, yeah. confidant. And that that's a weird, um, like, uh, a mission in this book. Because we have these books, so many, so many of our books that we have, like, have way less of this like male emotional intelligence yeah but we have really great female friends yeah and you don't have that in this so that's it's a little odd honestly right. so when it comes to consent is this book more robin thick or marvin Gaye? this it is very good on consent yeah it's so good like he is and i did enjoy like how sexually progressive jess is like yes that she's like you know somebody was like what is this feeling i don't know she's like I want to fuck this man. Yeah, she's like, I want it. Yeah, I am DTF. Like, give me that. Yeah, I see this watch. I want this to happen to me. Yeah, now. Yeah, like it's very. There is not an iota of any kind of non consensual business. No, and except I mean, for like, like you know peeping tom business. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> but, but like, I mean, so like I, I really, I kept thinking about the Sherbrooke Bride for this. Yeah, because it's, like, a, it's, the, it's a very, not dissimilar uh, setup almost. Yeah. Um, like a guy who has a ton of like bi blow children and all this, yeah. and like that was ooh, a lot of problems. Rough. Yeah, and, and I mean like this, she was like, I want you to. I mean, like, I know, and she was all like, she was twenty seven, she was an older person, like she knew what she wanted, mm-hmm. 
it really worked. I mean, no, and uh, yeah, it was enthusiastic. Grown about them. up people. Mm-hmm. Uh, how badly are you judging your mom off for reading this book? Oh, God. oh, oh, she don't. I think my mom, I think my mom would have loved it. That that man just needs somebody to make him some biscuits. Probably, like he needs biscuits. He does need biscuits. Like it, it, the the prologue is written very well when it's from this child's like perspective. Oh Jesus, you feel oh like my where you God. just want to hug this kid. Like yeah, just is, give him some goddamn biscuits. It's real, okay. So would Scarlett Johansson be in the movie? This is fascinating. I find a lot of this really interesting. I do think this book has a lot of and what I will what. Where I will give it, like, whatever, is most of the sex workers in this book are named. Yes. Really, you don't get a lot. Yeah, and they even have, like, little itty-bitty dialogue bits, Mm -hmm. you know? And then... But the question of the gay, possibly, character... Yeah, the possibly It's it's got an evil gay gay. slash bi, we don't know what He just wants to catch a a look at that dick, which, by the way, uh, as we have said, is not hard to do. He said, like, yeah. But, yeah, we've got an evil gay. But, like, I don't know what to make of him because he's not even a character. He's just so... I would be interested to read the other ones because I feel like he's probably in that, too. I don't know. Like, you know... Because, again... This Beaumont person has this wife, and his wife is, for whatever reason, disgusted by him and will not let her touch him. And she's an artist. And like, a, like a famous artist. Yeah, and he's the one, like, spying on people. So we don't... He's angry at Dane because Dane beat the shit out of him for trying to look at his dick. Which, again, Dane shows on the reg... It's very weird. I don't know. Like, I feel like that. Like that part seemed very. Is yeah. There was an evil gay thing going on, but it was kind of hard to put your finger on. And then there's tell you enough about it. So there's also this thing, and I. I mean, this is <laughs> it's it's hilarious in a way. But like when Dane is at school, they keep calling him a blackamoor. Yeah, it's just because Italians ain't white, evidently. I guess I like that. Yeah, I think that our girl Loretta is of the <laughs> of the school of Italians are their own ethnicity, which he just has a tan. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So it's you know where she ke- he, and he keeps calling himself that. He keeps calling like, and historically, a blackamoor is a black person. You know. A black person. But then you read books again, like Jane Eyre, and and like Rochester's is always like it's like a inside outside kind of thing. He's dark, 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 well, dark. Like, but yeah, I mean, like, but like romance, and that's what romance does. Romance yeah. talks about somebody as dark because it's all about like they they go from dark to being like pale mm-hmm. and trembling for love. Yeah. But when you use the term, this very specific yeah, term, that is, which is yeah. a you know, it's a it's a ethnic, you know, like a term for a colorization, a more like literally. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah. like now, we are calling this man who is not this this term. I think that's a thing. I'm like, I understand. I appreciate what she's trying to do, but it's also this weird, sticky, wicked. Of well, you wonder if, with Italians and how people deal with Italians. And I don't know enough about, um, honestly, like Regency bullying, <laughs> like to know. Yeah. I wonder if that was the kind of thing you would get called at Eaton if you had a tan. Oh my god! Oh, quite possibly, because I, you know, and I, I, I don't know enough about it. So you know, maybe somebody yeah. does in the comments. To, but yeah, it's it's uncomfortable because like obviously they're 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 because it's like again we're talking about somebody. It's who not okay to use a racial slur at all, but it's especially, like, but it's especially for a white man. Yeah, because I, I, there was a point in it, like when I'm reading it, uh, I, I texted Sarah. I was like, is this part like? No, 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 he's just not. I was like, is he biracial? Like, what is happening? But he's not. No, he's not. (laughs) Okay. You're not leaving the house looking like this. She wears a negligee. It's pretty good. She wears, like, there's some outfits. She has outfits. She has a very descriptive negligee. But she has also some ridiculous 1830s outfits, which I loved because they're so silly. Like, Her look it up. Her poopy dress. Like, Google yeah. 1830s fashion. It is so dumb. And so, like, the book loves that. It loves it. Like, and yeah. she's like, and she doesn't defend it or whatever. She's like, yeah, yeah, I wore this stupid fucking bonnet. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh, and you and bought her it. hat like the those big hats. Like, um, no, her negligee was the the crowning piece because she had a negligee, and they and they, they they and they made and like, and I do like Loretta's. Like, this is not a chemise. This is yeah. not like this is this is a sex thing. 
She got this sex thing from Paris, and it's red and black, and it's super hot. Oh, my goodness. And it's got, like, little things. Over the- and it uh, cost her about 50 cents because that's how much material. Yeah, I mean, she does not eat anything. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. Uh, but it also has, like, this thing where you can tell, even if you don't know anything about the fashion of the era, that he is seeing she she's wearing ball a ball gown at, at that party yes and he's like how dare they like she's practically naked which he's never noticed a dress like this ever in his life i mean and she's not well, really know, on the shoulder he's always just around biggins yeah so that's they, true the biggins don't ever have to yeah they're just naked yeah. they're just like whatever fuck it <laughs> um would your 12 year old self a dog your any pages oh they fuck Oh my god, it's good. Like the the glove scene is a mate. Like, that is honestly the sexiest unsexy. It's really... It reminded me very much of the um in the Age of Innocence, the film with Daniel yeah. Lewis. Oh my god. My husband's gonna come running up and be like, That was filmed in Troy, New York. <laughs> he loves chocolate. <laughs> no, it was very, very hot. It was really hot. And like a... usually these books will try to do a thing where they like try to pull a regency thing where people are not having you know, it, it's 13, what would, yeah, 14, yeah, it would it would be 15, scandalous fuck. in the time period, but it's not scandalous to you now, and that doesn't usually work. This one works like fucking and gang then Our boy, like our our emo boy, like any time sex is on the on the table, he like just goes into Italian, and yeah, like, God, and like he's talking about all the things he wants to like do with her, and like it's it was like he's very again sexual like. Sex wise, especially like when that is happening, is the one time that like all his walls come down and he's like, it's it's really hot. It is a very hot book. So yeah, I, I like legit. I, um, this yeah. this uh, this book was sexier than anything we've read in a while. Yeah. Yeah, because it didn't talk about anybody's paunchy globes. I'm looking at you, scruples. Paunchy globes. Ask me about my paunchy globes. Uh, what pairs nicely with the dumpster fire? Gotta be champagne, right? Oh, obviously. Champagne. This is champagne. They're in France for a bit of this. Yeah. And then, should a person in the 21st century, or should a human being in the 21st century read this? Yeah. I like it a lot. I do. Like, again, I feel like Dane just annoyed me in a way, but it was like, he's so... Well, he's very much the I can fix him... Um, fantasy. It was just like he said, but in, it wasn't. It was just because he said, like, it was interesting to read because he's like the most emo person we have ever read. Yes, like he is so just. Usually, our dudes are like, "Ha ha, my feelings can be fixed by a fuck." N- no, like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Oh my god, he wants to sit in a room painted black, and he wants to have his records on. Does he, he see a red door, and he wants to paint he it just, black? You know, he just wants you to leave him alone and be like, "Good." You know what it was? I felt like. It, he recognizes compromise, <laughs> and you're just too stupid to realize. He was like, I, I, how I envision this man being is, oh my god. The I thing feel, is, though, he's I not like, like a poet. He's like a I he's a like, rake. I feel like that he was. I I, de- I never watched the show, but I know enough about it. I feel like he was the Adam Driver character from Girls. No, I never watched girls on there. He's like, I just can't. You're making me feel things, and I don't know how to feel things. That's, I thought you were gonna say Kylo Ren. Well, that too. <laughs> I, feel like, I, mean, I do feel like that Adam Driver is like he's got big Adam Driver energy. He does. It's like if you took Adam Driver, you know, Adam Driver has a big nose. Adam Driver and Severus Snape, and, <laughs> you know, like. Oh, uh, you know, it was, it's very much that, like, oh, I've got a, I've got a. He punches a lot of mirrors. He punches that many mirrors, but like, I but d- not in this like, fuck me, I'm just gonna die of lung cancer and also cirrhosis kind of way. But I d- not in the poet Garrett. I way. did appreciate like in this, and I, before we like get up, like I, what I appreciated was like about it, which I think is like an interesting way to do it is usually we have where a woman thinks less of herself like about her like she is not confident in her looks it's always yes. like she's deficit framing her looks and this guy is like it, it's opposite because like he you know he went to Eaton and like obviously was a skinny kid with like a bigger nose and that's all he's that's his whole it became his whole 
identity. Yeah, I'm a whore's, a whore's child and all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, like, like he's so ugly that a, a, a prostitute, like a sex worker would like have to pay extra, like kind of thing. Like, Meanwhile, like, in this one, like she's like, I'm great and I know I'm great. So she's like, like I'm, what do you yeah, got to bring to the like, table? She's totally confident, but like then she looks at him and she doesn't see any, like it's not, oh, he's ugly. Like she is hot for him. And she's like, why does he think he's ugly? I yeah, so I think it's really, like, really interesting because like the way that he talks about him, his body and himself is very like oh is it time for somebody else to have a body issue yes it was kind of nice to see like a man with a body issue so yeah it was Jesus kind Christ. of like this like it was like a little bit of a reverse like what you usually see so i, th- I do think it's like important in that aspect so so we decided to you know start off our february fun with loretta chase and one of the books y'all are the most horny for, which is Lord of Scoundrels. And we're going to finish February with another book y'all are super horny for, which is Dreaming of You by <laughs> Lisa Kleppis. And I haven't read it, so I don't know if and... I'm going to shit on this or not. <laughs> we're, we're going for Derek Craven. We're going to see what we think of Derek Craven. We want the emo boys this. Are we going to get canceled if we go for Derek Craven? How are they going to cancel us? We're not on a network. Who's canceling we're... us? Oh. <laughs> Nobody's canceling us. Our 200 people who listen to us every time I might decide not to do that anymore. I don't know. But we're My feelings would get hurt. Yeah, that'll be fine. It's going to be fun. And, the, you know, obviously, Dreaming of You with Derek Craven is a little bit later than what we usually do. But you know what? Lisa Kay is, she's, she is, you know, massive. It's so. Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day. Who cares? And I can't wait for you guys to get mad at us. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. I, I mean, maybe you won't. Maybe we'll love it. Well, yeah, I mean, it, people are mad at us no matter what. That's so. true. So this has been Bodice Templars, and you can find us for as long as Twitter exists before Elon Musk, like, he does whatever, and it just becomes porn hell. You can find us at B Templars on Twitter. Porn hell sounds kind you of can find us at <laughs> Porn hell. You can find us at <laughs> Porn hell. You can find us at on Instagram at Bodice Templars, Facebook Bodice Templars. If you want to throw us a little bit of money and the money that you give us goes to equipment and things like that, we are at patreon.com slash bodice tipplers. And again, you can just go to po- bodice tipplers.com. <laughs>